Right, we're going to use the remainder of the clay from the air drying kit. I'm going to split this into two lumps. Like so. And create a ball with each one of these. And what we're going to do is we're going to create two pinch pots and then bring them together to make a closed form. So if you wanted to create a sort of vase shape or a basic form to model on to create uh, a sculpture of a head or something, this is how you would do it. So we start off with the simple ball of clay smooth that in and we're going to make two half spheres again just pinching the clay from the inside if it starts to open up just squeeze the clay together This is the technique used by most people to create their first pot. So whether you go on to use different techniques, slab building, throwing, sculpting, this is very often most people's first introduction to clay. What I want to do is bring these two halves together, so I've got to create a ledge so that we can join the two halves. So I'm just folding the clay over. And that'll give me two surfaces to bring together. Like so, start on the second one. You can see why it's called pinch pottery, because basically that's what we're doing. We're just pinching the clay between the finger and the thumb to create a hollow vessel. If you feel that the clay is too soft and the form might collapse, just set it aside for a few minutes to let it stiffen off again and then come back to it. If you feel that you want to stop and have a rest and a break from the making, but you're concerned that the pot might dry out, then just pop it inside a plastic bag and seal it. And as long as it's uh, airtight, the pot will keep indefinitely, and then you can come back to it. Many people who go to evening classes will do this. They'll work on a pot, and then at the end of the session, they'll cover it in plastic, seal it, and then leave it, and then they can come back to it a week later and carry on where they left off. We've got almost the same diameter now, so again I'm going to fold the edge over like 
like so. So we've got two flat surfaces uh, to bring together. I mean, they're quite nice on their own. Painted up, finished like that. You could put your peanuts or your sweets in those. We can bring the two spheres together now, like so. And then we can join these two flanges. And what we're wanting to do is trap the air inside. And once the air is trapped inside, we can then start to shape it because the, the air inside is actually supporting the shape now. We can use a modeling tool and we can start to smooth that into the body of the pot. see you can because the air is trapped inside so what I'm going to do now is try and bring these two joints together as neatly as possible this takes quite a bit of time just gradually work our way around blending both sides into the basic body of the pot. Again, I would avoid, if possible, getting this wet. It would probably cause you more problems. The pot would get very, very soft. So just patiently work your way around, joining the two edges together. Right, I'm just sort of rolling this a little bit now just to try and create a better sphere. Obviously, the, the more time you can spend on this, the better. And then you can also use the sticks if you want to actually beat the surface and bring the two forms together. If you get a little tear, just smooth it back in again. Right, I've just gradually altered the shape into a more sort of pear shaped now. And I'm just putting a little bit of moisture off the sponge onto the tool just to gradually begin to smooth the surface. We don't want to get this wet, but the moisture just helps to smooth in those last little bumps and wrinkles. The advantage is because the air is trapped inside the form, it's pretty well self-supporting. But before I open the top, I want to get as much of this shaping done so that the form has plenty of strength. So 
Some people, when they're doing this type of work, will spend hours, days, if not weeks, working the surface to get an absolutely perfect finish. We refer to this as burnishing. Some people use stones, bits of wood, backs of a metal spoon, etc., to achieve a finish. I'm going to pop a hole in the top now. And I can open this up. What I'm going to do is use one of these tools to create a texture on this upper portion. So I'm creating the lines, but I'm also using it to push in and shape the top. using the teeth on the end of the modelling tool to create that edge. And then I'm going to smooth that in. This is a very good te technique for sort of creating very sort of organic forms like dried gourds and fruit. I think we'll stop there because to go much further won't do a great deal for the surface because it probably needs to be left to stiffen off for a little bit now and then we can come back and work that surface more and so I'd like to have a sort of very smooth almost glass like texture or surface here and then this rougher textured top as a contrast. And again, what we can do is we can leave that for about 24 hours for it to dry out completely and then we can paint it using the acrylic paints. Mm -hmm.